OK, now that we have studied Snell's law of reflection and refraction, we can apply these laws to study the behavior of light rays in various cases of geometric optics. One of the most important applications concerning the reflection of a light beam on the border between two media is called a total internal reflection. This is a unique phenomenon when a beam of light comes in from medium one and tries to get a reflection off the boundary between medium and, and media two. In the case when n1 is greater than n2, okay, in other words, the speed of light is greater in the first medium and slower in the second medium. Now, in uh, technical lingo, we call the first medium in which the speed of light is greater as an optically denser medium. Okay, so when I say optically denser, it means the speed of light is, is slower in this medium. So, when a beam of light gets reflected off of the boundary between two media, it starts from an optically denser medium, gets into an optically less dense medium. Obviously, from Snell's law of refraction, theta 1 is going to be less than theta 2. Okay, because as we know, uh, sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 equals n1 over n2 and in this case that is greater than 1 because n1 as we know is greater than n2. An example would be going from glass to air. Now imagine if I increase theta 1, okay, if I increase theta 1 then theta 2 is going to go even greater, right? And since theta 2 is always greater than theta 1, you can imagine at some point theta 1 is so large then theta 2 becomes 90 degrees, okay? It actually, you know, the reflected, the refracted beam is parallel to the borderline. When does it happen? It happens when theta 2 equals 90 degrees, okay? So I can rewrite this as sine theta 1 over sine theta 2, which is 1, equals n2 over n1, and that's less than 1, okay? So it happens at this particular angle theta 1 such that sine theta 1 equals to n2 over n1 which is a number less than 1 which is reasonable okay now my question is if the incoming angle if the incident angle is even greater than that value then what's going to happen well at theta equals theta 1 which is e which is given by this expression the reflected beam the refracted beam is already parallel to the um, border so if you increase theta 1 then you can imagine Theta 2 will have to further increase, but that is not possible. That would mean it actually goes back to the first medium, right? Because that's the increase beyond 90 degrees, which is not possible. So, as a result, when the angle of incidence is theta 1 or greater, which satisfies this expression, there will be no beam reflected, refracted into the second medium. All that you see is a reflection back into the first medium. In other words, there is 100% reflection and no refraction. That is the so-called total internal reflection, okay? It reflects internally back into the first medium. So you're going to see a situation like this, the incoming beam, and then you have the reflected beam. Nothing gets into the second medium. This is called total internal reflection. Now, what's so important about total internal reflection? Well, with total internal reflection, no energy of the light actually enters the second beam, uh, into second medium, okay? Every bit of energy is reflected back in the first medium, and that sometimes can be taken advantage of. For example, I can build a flexible material, okay, called a fiber optic material. And it's transparent, and it's got an end value, of course, greater than one. Suppose I use this material in air. So outside is air, inside this is this material with an index refraction n. Then I allow a beam of light to go in, okay, to from, from this end, and gets into this fiber optic material, and uh, you can see at this at this point it's going to start to reflect. Suppose this angle is greater than the critical angle for total internal reflection, which satisfies this formula. Okay, by the way, I should really write this formula down. Uh, sine theta critical equals to n two over and one. That's the critical angle for of incidence. Any angle that's greater than that will cause total internal reflection. Suppose this angle is greater than theta critical. 
then nothing gets back into the air. Okay, everything gets reflected internally. So then you enter this area. And if this angle is still greater than the um, critical angle here, then again, you have a total internal reflection. So you see this thing can go on. Okay, this thing can go on. I can even draw it further. I can draw it further. And I find that the beam simply propagates along this fiber optic strand in a zigzag path. It never gets back into the air. It keeps, it keeps on traveling within the fiber optic line. And the energy is undiminished because there is no leak of energy to the back into the air. And the nice thing about this is that you can see this tube here is not quite straight. Okay, It is actually flexible. It is flexible, and yet light can somehow bend around, and it can travel a long distance before exiting from the other end of the fiber optic line. So this tells us that this is a very useful setup for transmitting visible light signals from one end of the wire to another end of the wire, even though the wire can be bent to a certain to a certain degree. Okay, and energy will not be diminished. This is a very neat way. Uh, with many many applications, for example, in medical imaging, uh, we can actually allow the uh, you know we, we can insert a flex flexible tube, for example, down the throat. Uh, this tube is made of fiber optic materials, so you can actually catch an image um, inside the, the 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 throat, for example, with this flexible tube. And you can see it from from outside without actually cutting into anything. Okay, so in telecommunications as you probably have heard of. This idea of total internal reflection can also play a very, very important role. Phone lines, for example, these days, the backbones of, te uh, of, of telephone companies, uh, they carry their signals with uh, fiber optic lines instead of, uh, instead of copper wires. Because the fiber optic line carries visible light signal. Okay, It doesn't carry much lower frequency FM signals through a, fiber, uh, through a conventional copper wire. And uh, the uh, frequency of visible light is about 10 to the 14 hertz, as you know, right? And yet the frequency of, um, of a typical FM is only 10 to the 8. So 10 to the 14 and 10 to the 8, you see there is a six orders of magnitude difference. The frequency carried by a visible light signal is a million times or 10 to the 6 times as much as the frequency carried by an ordinary FM signal that can propagate along a copper wire. With a higher frequency, you can pack information into greater density. So that means that in principle, a single fiber optic wire can carry information a million times as dense as the information that can be carried on a copper wire, which means you can replace a million telephone wires with audio signals with a single fiber optic wire. Okay, And uh, we can also use this uh, to produce high tra high speed transmission wires for internet for example we can use that to to transmit high definition video data which requires a very high rate of transmission easily through fiber optic wires so fiber optic telecommunication is the telecommunication of the future and uh the, the guiding principle behind that is very simple just total internal reflection okay so you can see a lot of that in the future i bet all right, let's look at some other examples. One other example is a very typical one. It's called a broken chopstick. Okay, I'm sure you have seen this before somewhere. You have a chopstick that you insert into water. Okay, this is the this is the water and this is the air. When you look at the chopstick from above the water surface, the chopstick appears to be bent. Okay, that appears to be bent. In fact, it appears to be bent towards the surface of the water. How does that work? Well, the chopstick, of course, is not really bent. It's an optical illusion, right? It's an optical illusion. So let's take a look at where the optical illusion com comes from. This is the real chopstick, okay? It's, of course, unbroken when you insert into the water. So this is the real end point of a chopstick. Now, suppose I view this chopstick from above, okay? I see an image of the chopstick inside the water, right? How come it appears to be bent? Well, let's see. In order to see the, an image of the end of the chopstick, light beams from the end of the chopstick has to somehow travel through water and get back into 
into air so we can see it. Okay, we can draw one such light beam, right? One such light beam. For simplicity, let's say this is a beam that simply travels perpendicularly up out of the water. Okay, now the uh, this is the normal line. Right? So therefore, the incident angle for this beam is what? It's simply zero, right? You know, it's because the, it's the angle made between the, uh, the 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 light ray and the normal line, and that's zero. Zero angle in, zero angle out. So here is one beam. Okay, it just comes directly out. Well, let's look at another beam. Okay, suppose there is another beam come from the the, the 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 end point. It it goes this way. Here is the angle of incidence, right? The angle of incidence. Remember, this is water, and that's air. For air, air is optically thinner than water, which means the speed of light is greater in air, and therefore the outgoing angle should be greater, right? The outgoing angle, this angle, is greater than that angle, right? Okay, now, if you observe this chopstick, right, from here, this is your eye, you look, you look at the chopstick in the water, now you don't see these light rays. What you see are the light rays coming out to reach your eye. Here is one example, here is another example. Okay, now this light ray appears to be coming from here, another light ray coming from there, and this is where they appear to originate. Our eyes can then automatically process this image to have the illusion that these two light rays start from there, even though the real light ray starts from here. So it appears the end of the chopstick were here, and therefore, the chopstick appeared to be broken like this. Okay, it appeared to be bent towards the surface of the water. That is, of course, only an optical illusion. But uh, uh, that also means that if you put something, suppose this is the bottom of the swimming pool. Okay, this is the real bottom of the swimming pool. The uh, um, when you look at the uh, swimming pool from above, it appears the bottom is there. So it appears the bottom is shallower than it really is. So that can create a danger, an illusion. To a child who doesn't know how to swim, you know, he may think that, that the bottom is pretty thin, uh, pretty pretty close to the, to the surface, you know, whereas the swimming pool is not very deep, but in reality it can be deeper. So that's something you got to pay attention to. Okay. Another related example. What does a fish see? Okay, here's a fish. It lives somewhere below water. And uh, my question is, what kind of image can the fish see? from air above okay now suppose you have an object here an object here this object in order to see the object uh, light rays has to come from the object reach the eye of the fish so here is one example it does something like this you see the way I draw it I realized that this is air this is water so this angle the incident angle must be greater than the transmitted angle, right? Because, you know, this is optically denser. Water is optically denser. So it has to bend towards around like that. So imagine you have another object there. That object, in order, in order to be seen by the fish, light rays will have to come like this. Okay? This angle is even greater. You can see here, at some point, a beam that comes from the air is at such an angle that this is the critical angle for total internal reflection. That means that the incident angle is 90 degrees, okay? It's 90 degrees. It's like this, all right? So, is it possible for, for a fish to see a beam like that coming from above? Not at all, right? Because that angle, you know, if, if you had a beam like that, that angle would be even greater than, than, than theta critical, but that's not going to work because that would mean the incoming angle had to be not greater than 90 degrees, which is not possible. So, the fish can see this light, this light, this light, this light. You can actually see symmetrically from the other side as well. Okay, but the greatest angle the fish can see, this greatest angle, is theta critical. It's theta critical. Okay, so the fish can see light rays within a cone-shaped region. Here is a cone-shaped region, all right? And what is the half angle of this cone? Theta critical. And same thing, theta critical. The fish can see light coming from a circular region above the water. And what if you have an object there? 
This object, of course, you can see the fish can see directly, but off of reflection, if you if if this if this object has a beam of light that's reflected off of the surface, that will be a total internal reflection. Okay, so if you look above, suppose you are inside water, you look above, okay, what do you see? You will see a circular region that's bright, that's open to the outside, okay? And then if you if you look beyond this circular region, this, this bright circle, towards the surface of water, what you see is the reflection. It's a reflection from, you know, say the bottom of the swimming pool. So that's that's interesting. You're gonna see, you know, an outside world only in a circular shape, and beyond that, what you see is, you know, what's 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 happening at the bottom of the swimming pool, for example. Okay, and uh, what is this angle equal to? By the way, we can find a numerical value of this angle because for for air and the water, sine theta critical, as you know, is uh, um, n air divided by n water. And air is about equal to one, and water is about uh, 1.33 so it's 1 divided 1.33 and from that you can find this angle okay we can find this angle 1 over 1.33 and uh, let's find the uh, angle uh, this angle is 0.5 radian In other words, it's about 49 degrees, okay? So the so the, the fish can only see uh, this circular region which extends half an angle of 49 degrees from the outside world. This is due to total internal reflection.